Well, we've often had guests in the past that come on uh, for the wonderful moment uh, musicale that Valerie Geller puts on, but I don't think we've ever had a married couple, and today we do, and I'd like to welcome both Kirsten and Ryan Weston, and uh, a pleasure to have you on. Thank you for having us. This is kind of neat. Uh, first, I have to, I have to ask that, uh, did you meet as musicians before uh, you got married? Yes, actually, we met. Like, what I mean, obviously, they were musicians, but at some kind of a function. Well, we actually met at uh, Schoenberg, which is the music hall at UCLA, mm -hmm. and uh, it was not where I expected to find my future wife, but uh, I basically uh, met her. Uh, she was a pianist at the time, and I was obviously playing saxophone at mm -hmm. the time, and. Uh, I bugged her a lot, uh, you know, knocked on her practice room door a lot, <laughs> and uh, so that's basically how we met, essentially, was at UCLA in the music department. And uh, I think the interesting here that um, you're a pianist mm -hmm. and you're a saxophonist, yeah. and, my, I, and I have to ask uh, straight away, are are you more classically trained or are you more uh, uh, jazz trained? Or Great or question. What? Well, oh, why don't you go for it? I'm definitely a classical player, so you know, from the time I was five, always learning Beethoven and Mozart, and, and then I met this guy who is both, so I've learned a little bit more jazz since obviously playing with him and being married to him. But. Yeah, I, uh, at UCLA I was actually uh, trained classically, mm -hmm. uh, which you don't think of classical no, music in regard to the saxophone, but no. there's a lot of classical repertoire that's actually written for the saxophone. Uh, and it's it's awesome music, mm -hmm. uh, but I, again, she's uh, I'm kind of both, as my wife had said. Uh, when I was in high school and even early college, I played a, in a lot of jazz bands and, and was taught primarily by jazz uh, saxophonists. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't really till I got to college that I started to uh, explore more of the classical side of playing, uh, which helped me a lot even in, in when I was playing jazz. So. Uh, I play both. I, I play as, as many different types of uh, musical styles as I can. So. Now, you two uh, perform together a mm -hmm. lot as a duel, or do you add in other musicians as well? We usually perform as a duo. I think the first time we performed together at UCLA was a trio with right. another saxophonist. Mm -hmm. right. But then after that, we decided just to work together because it's just easier with yeah, logistics and right. Because yeah. I think, you know, as you're, you're talking about the different styles of music that people think, of course, piano can be any style. Uh, it's in, in my mind, I'm trying to think what it would sound like because again, in my mind, I'm thinking, well, the jazz tones of a saxophone right. or a kind of an upbeat where classical is less upbeat. And right. I'm trying to think, okay, how, how is this sounding? Right. You folks probably heard a little bit as we came from the break, so it certainly does work, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, oh, I think the music they were playing was probably my wife playing piano, uh, uh, Beethoven, I think, by herself, mm -hmm. but um, it definitely works. It sounds kind of like, um, I, I don't know, like an oboe or mm -hmm. uh, almost like a violin, too. I mean, there's, it's, it has a very uh, rich sound to it, the saxophone does, and it allows um, you know the player to be able to blend with the piano, and so uh, you know it, it just works. You know, it works really well. Do you play other um, reed instruments as well? Uh, like I clarinet do play clarinet, like okay. a little bit of flute, uh, but primarily saxophone. Different types of saxophones is what I specialize in. So, now were you playing together before you got married? Yes. Uh, a little bit. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, because we had met. Uh, as far as music. forming a duel. Right, right. Okay. Well, we weren't the well, Weston duo right. then. Yeah, <laughs> we weren't no. specifically a duo prior to us getting married, but we definitely played together, mm -hmm. uh, you know, under different like musical contexts. So. And I see you've played uh, just many different uh, places uh, in the area, Nixon Library for an example, and uh, you've done um, at uh, different music halls, and uh, you taught uh, music at uh, J. Sarah? Am I right? Oh, or yeah, that was, fundamentals and yeah, uh, yeah, in that theory? was for I did that for like a I think a couple months. It wasn't like a a, a long time I was teaching there. But yeah, it was like a year <laughs> that still, I taught there. That's, yeah, that's nice though. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what type of music are you going to be playing uh, next week? We're playing music by Latin American composers. So this okay. concert specifically is Piazzola, who's from Argentina. So it'll be really fun music, yeah. kind of variation on the tango. Oh, very nice. Yes. So it's going to be more kind of upbeat. Upbeat, no. yes. Yeah. Very right. exciting. Interesting. Right. And an interesting th thing about Piazzolla is he uh, incorporated jazz and classical music into the tango. Mm -hmm. And so it, that's how it works uh, for saxophone and piano. Why, uh, you know, he's a perfect um, uh, composer for, for this type of uh, arrangement that we have here, uh, saxophone and piano. Speaking of those arrangements, did you find as a saxophonist 
uh, more restricted as you moved into classical because obviously with jazz mm -hmm. uh, you get more of an opportunity to put in your own riffs and things like that right is that true in some classical music as well uh, you know you put in a few of your variations and obviously it was you know years and years and centuries right. ago but right. now do you feel no we got to play it as it was intended well, there's a lot of schools of thought on that, and I think it depends on what context you're playing in. Mm -hmm. uh, like if you're playing a competition, typically I, I don't see people improvising unless it's like a jazz competition. Right. Typically at classical competitions, you're going to be playing what's written on the page or playing it memorized. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I don't necessarily feel that that restricted me. Um, again, because I played jazz separately, so if I wanted to improvise, I could just do it under a different setting. But it just takes a different set of skills, a little bit different set of skills to play classical music than it does uh, jazz, mm -hmm. but um, each help each other. So. And we play a lot of contemporary music together because the saxophone was invented in 1850, right? right? Mm -hmm. So a lot of it is newer ideas and we've had the opportunity to work with living composers as well. So when you have the chance to do that, you can you know, put in your ideas and talk to the composer, maybe we could try this or that, and they can tell you if they like it or if they don't. So it depends on what music you're playing. That's yeah. interesting you say, I didn't realize the saxophone is that new. So obviously yeah, it was just, not yeah. around in Beethoven and Mozart's no, no, time no. or anything no, like that. No, right. So, yeah, I mean, but even, uh, I mean, those composers, I mean, would allow, especially I think Mozart would yeah. allow for areas of improvisation within his music. Right. I don't think that's done as much nowadays. No. Um, I mean, you'd, you'd be more the expert than me on that. Well, but. in those times, you know, when there was a cadenza or something and mm -hmm. a concerto, it was improvised by the performer. Yeah. It wasn't written out like today, you know, we study and we practice and we go to our teachers and we work on things. But I did have an opportunity playing a quartet where I did have a small cadenza that I had to improvise. But of course you prepare that before. Yeah, yeah so it was the jazz of its time right. in a way. I, did, yeah, I mean, all exactly. music at one time exactly. was. Yeah. It was improvised yeah. as, as it went along and uh, you know, once it was written down, then, then that's different. Mm -hmm. I want to uh, again remind everyone this is next Thursday, Moment Musicale, that uh, this duel would be there. And it's done at the Laguna Hills Community Center in their Heritage Room, <coughs> pardon me, at 12.30 to 1. It's free, it is wonderful, and uh, give, it a, give it a try. There it is, <coughs> pardon me, information on the screen. Valerie Geller puts this on, she's sitting over there. And uh, we'll have her on again, I think in a couple weeks, right? All right, so we'll see you then. Thank you, Kirsten and Ryan, we really appreciate you coming on. Thank it's gonna you be very a lot much. Of fun. All right, we'll be right back. <coughs> Just in